Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Kanyas. Today I have with me David McFarland, uh, founder and CEO at Coterie. David, thank you for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here, Tony. Awesome. And, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to have you because uh, I'm familiar with Coterie, uh, ran into you guys kind of in a bunch of different ways. I'm friends with, with Justin Sotmeyer. Uh, we've done a little bit of, of staffing business with, with, with you guys. Uh, and I hear lots of great things about, about you guys. And I had never had somebody from Coterie on the podcast. So I was very excited to, to, to have you on the podcast. So, so David, uh, we, oh, well, for, for, first of all, the, 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 the kind of the, the mandatory wet weather uh, icebreaker. So you're in Cincinnati. Uh, we're recording on, on April 5th. So in Ohio, I know because I've lived there, April 5th can either be beautiful or you can be under like a foot and a half of snow. Uh, it, it can be like either of the two, right? So, so, so how, how's the weather uh, in, in your area today? Like you said, we have a very bipolar spring. Uh, today, it's, it's a very damp 53 degrees, uh, quite dreary and gray. Uh, so you know, not, not on the pleasant scale, but uh, yeah, we've got next week to look forward to where it's going to be so accepted. That's a, that's actually a very like spring day. Like, like what I've noticed in Ohio is is you don't get a lot of that. It's it's one or the other, right? So so yeah. good good for spring. Okay, that's that's good to know. Uh, so so uh, so we always give the guests the chance to get to give the elevator pitch. Uh, what what is Coterie? Yeah, Coterie is a insurance manufacturer. So we, we manufacture the insurance, right? Like we put it together, package it, and then we work with distribution partners who, who sell the insurance. Uh, and we work with the distribution partners in a variety of ways. We have both non-traditional and traditional distribution partners. So traditional ones where it's maybe your, your agents, your brokers, and uh, we empower them through really the, the insurance products that we manufacture. And we focus on speed, simplicity, and service. Uh, we really want to bring, uh, kind of unlock that small commercial uh, group that's out there right now, the small commercial space, because before uh, before we came around, it really wasn't uh, attainable in a good expense ratio side of things for our distribution partners, right? It costs so much money. Now, uh, we can find policies in uh, minutes and, you know, soon to be seconds through our data and technology. And we also work with non-traditional partners. Uh, so we work with uh, the you know, accounting platforms of the world, payroll, merchant services, stuff like that, so that we can integrate insurance in places where it's relevant to the end consumer, uh, but also help empower the even more traditional intermediar intermediaries through the data that we collect. Again, the goal is really just bring speed, simplicity, and service to commercial insurance. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So, so, so... I, I'm a carrier side guy, uh, by, by by trade kind of thing, uh, and and uh, but but I have worked with a lot of brokers as as an underwriter, as a, as a sales manager, or marketing rep, uh, over, uh, 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 helping them with with recruiting. Uh, my girlfriend works at a very large large broker, and and what I have heard over and over and over and over with small commercial it is a massive universe of small commercial very hard to 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 service profitably right in fact mo most producers don't get paid on accounts that produce less than five or ten thousand revenue right not premium yes right re 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 revenue right so 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 it's it's business that that the traditional channel has always struggled servicing uh profitably uh so can definitely see how what you guys are, are, are doing is, 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 is important. So, so, so you, you, you mentioned how the, the focus on speed and service, and, and you mentioned how you're, you're at the binding in minutes and moving towards binding in, in, in seconds because of, of data and tech. So for, 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 the, for the brokers, um, so, so if, 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 I'm, if I'm a broker and I'm focused in middle market or, or or on the other hand, I'm, I'm an agent focused on personal lines and, and uh, small business walks in the door or one of my medium-sized clients has a, a small company or their kid has a small company or, or whatever. Uh, what, what, what does the process look like? Do, do, do I need to 
to get acquainted with with, with Coterie? The, the, like, how, how does the process look like for the traditional channel? Yeah, so we have to have a relationship with with the broker or with the agent, right? So there's a you know appointment affiliation process that we have, um, but really it, it's pretty simple. We again everything we do, all of our interactions with our partners are focused on speed simplicity and service. So everything from that affiliation to binding policies to even you know continued service of the policies, and what we did that was pretty unique is that in in traditional carrier land. They, they basically had a mid-market product that they copied and pasted for small commercial, right? And that just created, it, it doesn't make sense, right? You have a $500 policy or a $1,000 policy. It's going to go through this exact same process as a $50,000 policy. Like, it, it does not work for the agent or broker. So what we did was we, we kind of redefined how we were going to do this, created a product that was focused on the small business and distributing through partners. And we built technology that was commensurate with that. So we have you know, data and tech that's really meant to make this process super smooth. So we're not gonna ask questions that don't really matter or really aren't class specific, right? Like we're, we're gonna eliminate a lot of that so that the agent or broker can find these policies very, very quickly and therefore make money and open up the, the, the total addressable market. So what this looks like, Back to your question, is we have a we have a dashboard that people can use. That's pretty typical, right? They come in, they can type in some information and get a bindable quote. Um, and the other thing that we do is we tell you right away whether or not we're going to write this business. So the very first thing is like, what does it do and where's it at, right? And based on that, we tell you yes or no right away. And that this is the current iteration. We do. I'll give you a little sneak peek. There, there's another iteration coming that's even faster, uh, fewer questions, really simple, really excited about that. But just based on like, you know, what, what this business does and where it is, we can tell you whether we're going to write that business or not. Then you put in some additional information and you get a bindable quote, not a quote, but you get a bindable quote. And therefore you can say like, okay, for uh, this small business, I want to get that business owner's product and a general liability policy. Well, business owners and a professional liability policy. Click on those, find them, get it off your plate very quickly. Okay, so 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 uh, the, the the product, the pro the product itself. I, I love, by the way, I really love how you called yourself an insurer's manufacturer. Uh, yep. I'm curious if, if that is your original phrase or or wh where you got that from because I had never never heard that anywhere so so uh if that is your original phrase trademarking it might be a good idea uh right. but either way really cool phrase so i'm, I'm curious where, where, where that uh phrase came from I, I honestly it came from uh I, I was trying to explain what we were doing i'm like well we're not actually a carrier and you know we're not we're not just reselling other people's product but what we're doing fundamentally is we're manufacturing the insurance for our distribution partners so it just uh, it was a it was a good way to describe what we actually were from a fundamentals perspective. Okay, that, that, that makes sense, right? And and, and the, the technical aspects, uh, since you're not a carrier, you're, you're an MGA or or MGU, right? Correct. Uh, now a lot of insurance MGAs will eventually probably become carriers, but that's a whole different yep. conversation. Uh, okay, so so the product itself is it a BOP product? Is it an ISO BOP? Uh, yeah, so we, it's an admitted product. Uh, it's a business, so we have business owner's product, a general liability and a professional liability product. We're gonna be launching workers' comp in the second half of this year. Uh, workers' comp is standardized across all the states, so that's what it is. Uh, the three other products, business owner's general liability, professional liability, um, some you know, heavily from ISO uh, with modifications in it uh, that, that are pretty unique uh, in a good way, like with, again, Focusing on making small commercial simple and you know, able to transact very quickly. Okay, so 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 the brokers can can rest assured that, that this is a a solid uh, product, so solid policy language, uh, yeah. right? The, 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 you, they're not at risk of of selling their clients a a, a non-standard or substandard product that's going to get them in you know trouble later. Okay. Correct. Per yeah. Perfect. And and. So, so, so the, the, the carriers, right? So, so when I, when I think small commercial, I, I, I immediately think the Hartford, they seem to lead among the traditional carrier players, but so, so all the traditional carrier players seem to have, you know, a BOP, 
uh, and then seem to have a platform that they that, that, that they want you to 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 get your quote at. And the problem is those platforms are home built. Uh, 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 they're not technology companies, and they're uh, it, even if, if the front of the platform is nice, uh, in the back end it's tied to systems that we're yeah. working hard to <laughs> to update. But in many cases, like an AS four hundred system in the back, right, that, that that just doesn't have the flexibility. Uh, so so. So, so you guys, it's it, you're a technology company, and, and and this is the 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 system is is front to back, a modern yeah. system that allows you to 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 serve the uh, serve them a lot better. That's basically. exactly right. And, and we we focused on two particular things when we built this company. Uh, and that was we needed to own the insurance product and we needed to own the tech product, and that means like take ownership of right. Uh, so from an insurance product standpoint, we decided like we aren't going to API out to other carriers and try and resell their products because there there is totally a market for that. It's just not how we wanted to come into it and innovate on the small commercial space. Uh, so we you know, we we became the insurance manufacturer, right? Like we created the insurance products, filed them with states, we handle our claims in house. Uh, we wanted to to control that from soup to nuts. Uh, the other component, this is what. You're, you're referring to specifically is the tech product itself. And we wanted to really be a product led organization in which we are focused on the end user experience and trying to bring value to that rather than just like optimizing for, you know, growth or loss ratio or something like that. Those are, those are fine things, but like we really wanted to provide value to our end user. And so how do we build products and iterate on products with that in mind? And so, you know, user testing, interviews with, with your customers, with your, with your distribution partners, all that, to figure out what are the actual problems that we need to solve. Uh, and that's that's how we approach the technology build. And it's, I mean, it, it, it's just evident in, you know, how we're buying things, how, what our product managers are focused on, how we're actually able to leverage data to make this whole process a lot easier. Okay. Uh, so, so a lot of of intrinsic founders are are tech people, uh, and in the last couple of years, more and more are actually insurance people. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of them are actuaries. <laughs> at, at least, uh, I mean, some, but they're, but generally, they're, 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 what 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 they created their insurtech to do is to build software that does something in the actual space better. I have run into those, but you're playing a, a MGA uh, distribution slash actually like build a product, the, the, the build the, the insurance uh, play and you're a former actuary. So I, I, I or, or, or I, I, I Probably not the right way to say it. And recovery you come from the, actuary. Recovery. <laughs> you come from the actuarial space, right? Yeah. So how so so looking at your, at your LinkedIn, okay. So 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 uh, you go to school at, at at Columbus State, which by the way, uh, not Ohio not State Columbus. University, right? Yeah. The, 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 like a cool. much smaller school that happens to be in the same town as as, as Ohio as Ohio State. I I always wonder uh, for people that go to the Columbus State. Uh, are are while you're in school, are 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 the bars much less fun? Like like, like, like when you say Columbus State, do people just look at you weird, or or oh. is it? It's a military town, so like Columbus, Georgia is a military town. Fort Benning's there, and uh, I mean, you know, I probably had more fun than I should have. It's a, I, I assumed Columbus, Ohio. I just realized that you're talking about Georgia. Okay, so, yeah. So okay. Uh, it's famously mentioned in Tommy Boy, uh, which is probably the only movie that mentions Columbus, Georgia. Um, but it's it's oddly like the second biggest city in Georgia. Uh, you're probably familiar with it because you live in Atlanta. Maybe you're not. Uh, not not particularly. I, I live in Atlanta. I rarely see the rest of Georgia. But but uh, I <laughs> I'll probably cut this part out uh, to avoid embarrassing myself from thinking you 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 went to. I, I'm confused because you're at Ohio right now, so it just yeah. made sense that you had gone to the smaller yeah. school in, in Columbus. Okay, so never mind, never mind on that one. Uh, 
Oh, um, okay. Wait. We can so, talk about Columbus, Georgia. I tell you some interesting stories about that point. So, so uh, okay. So, 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 so you graduate from school. You, you, you go into a traditional carrier as 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 an actuarial analyst, like like following the traditional actuarial path, and then you 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 become an actuarial consultant. Then you go back to the carrier space, right? So you've done kind of all the normal carrier stuff. Uh, well, excuse I, me, all, all the normal actuarial stuff. I started at NCCI, which mm -hmm. is not a carrier, right? NCCI is Oh, they're like, the work comp, uh, not FCCI. Okay, the, 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 the work comp data provider. Okay, okay, sorry. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like an ISO, right? But yeah. For work comp. Yeah. And, and so it was really cool because I got, a, I got, I feel like I got like all the experience. Like I got the, you know, the ISO stat agent, uh, you know, advisory org type side. I went to actuarial consulting and it was like a boutique firm. Uh, and that was really cool. I got a ton of different experience there. And then I went to the carrier side and got to build out some cool stuff on both commercial and personal lines and do the embedded insurance stuff. And, 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 and a super to... specialty carrier. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the, probably an interesting perspective too compared to having gone to like American Family or, or yeah. Nationwide. Yep, yeah. that's right. That's right. And then, uh, as you know, I, I then got to go to the uh, insure tech side of things, and I helped start clear cover with Kyle, and I'm, you know, employee number two there, uh, chief actuary head of insurance product, and we got to see that grow and do some cool things, and that really helped me learn what I, a lot of what I needed to learn in order to at least have some confidence in starting Coterie. Okay. Okay. So, so, so basically, a, a very well-rounded let's put it that way you go to see a lot of different parts of the actuarial world uh and and and, and then uh and then the clear cover opportunity gave you the insure tech exposure so basically you had you had the perfect background to 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 create your own your own insure tech it, it, it makes perfect sense i got to make a lot of mistakes in a lot of different areas that's right <laughs> Okay, got, got got it, got got it, got it, got it, uh, and and I'm I'm curious, why why Cincinnati? How do how do you ended up in Cincinnati for your personal life? So that's where where you created the company, basically. Uh, so I was in Chicago, and I I didn't want to start another insure tech in Chicago, not because I didn't think it could be a good place to start insure tech, but you know Kyle was there with clear cover and. We were probably going to have very similar types of talent that we would be pulling from. And we, we had a great relationship when I was departing, so I wanted to preserve that. I love the Midwest and thinking about where to start an insurance company. Uh, you know, I wanted a place that you know, had a little bit of a burgeoning tech scene, uh, had some commercial insurance talent you know, potentially to, to take from, maybe. Uh, and, no, it, it definitely does. You, you've got Cincinnati Insurance, American Modern, yep. uh, yeah, you, uh, and Great American. You've got at least three carriers that are, that are pretty good in commercial. Yeah. And uh, I wanted a place that had an airport that was halfway decent. I mean, you know, Cincinnati doesn't technically have one. It's in Kentucky, which is so odd, right? The Cincinnati it, it, airport, it is for really odd. don't know, it's like 30 minutes into Kentucky. Uh, but yeah, Cincinnati hit on a few things. Also, I had a, a fantastic mentor uh, by the name of John Ward, and he was in the Cincinnati space. And so he introduced me to a few people. He invested in Coterie initially at the beginning, uh, and that like, uh, helped me get to get to know the space a little bit more. I, I also have uh, a wife and four kids, and you know, kind it's, of it's 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 a very friendly area of the country to to raise a family like. That, like that, that, that. very good cost of living, good schools. Good, uh, yeah, that, I, I would definitely ra rather raise a family in Cincinnati than Chicago. Yeah, yeah. For Wonderful. for ma makes makes perfect sense. By by the way, you you were a little late on the airport. The airport's nice, uh, but it used to oh, be wow. a, a a Delta focus city, and then it it quit. It, Delta pulled that out. Uh, I don't know, like twenty thirteen or so. Maybe that, that was a before. Bezos focused airport. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but like Prime is centralizing their, their stuff here. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, well, maybe that'll help grow the airport and get you maybe. get you more 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 direct flights. Uh, okay, cool. So 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 Cotery, it's been uh, almost four years. Looks like for, from your LinkedIn profile, 
Uh, so, so that's that's a mature insure tech at this point. You guys, are, you know, have have survived. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and 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 you talked a, l- a little bit about the uh, new platform or new new version of the platform. You, you, you twice. One 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 time you you said going from minutes to seconds, and, and then you actually talked about. Uh, about so. So, what can you share about about this next? Uh... Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. I I I won't share too much. I mean, we do have agents and brokers using it right now, finding policies with it. Uh, we're getting great feedback on it. Uh, it's kind of brings that whole idea of speed simplicity to the next level. And uh, what what I'll tell you, like high level, what we're doing is you know, we're. Uh, we're actually using data in pretty novel ways to um, enable the the distribution partners to do what they're good at, like you know relationships and you know, coverage recommendations, stuff like that. And we handle all the you know, data collection side of stuff. Uh, this resonates with a lot of our of our partners, and it helps them to again turn the small commercial space into something that's actually profitable for them. So we're, we're, we're seeing good stuff right now. There'll be a more official you know, marketing campaign around it when the time comes. Uh, but for now, I'll, just, I'll leave it with that. Perfect. I completely understand that. that uh, so what you, you, you can say. Uh, uh, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. It's been very interesting. Like I said, I, I hear out in the market, I hear nothing but good things about Coterie. So very exciting to... To, to finally get, get you guys on the, on the, on the podcast. And, and I look forward to, to see uh, what you guys continue building in, in, in the very, very, very important uh, small commercial market that, that uh, just so much business. And uh, yeah. we've ha- the, the carriers ha- have been really good at, do- at doing it profitably. The brokers have had a hard time figuring out how to, how to do it profitably. So, so so uh, very, I, I, and I, I'm always a fan of, of bro- broker focused uh, insure techs. Obviously, I think I think on the commercial line side, the brokers are not going anywhere. Uh, so so, it's it's awesome to 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 see that that they're getting the right tools and the right partners to to uh, to properly do the job. Yeah, it, it's a mistake to disintermediate especially in the commercial line side, right? The, the brokers and the agents provide so much value to the end consumers, especially with these non-homogenous products that are out there. It's confusing. Like they, and this is their baby, right? Like the, these people have these small businesses that they want to protect and they don't have a clue of like what kind of coverage they need. The agents and brokers provide so much value to that. So we're, we're all about supporting them. Perfect. Uh, Awesome. Th- thank you very much for, for, for your time. Hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys uh, at either uh, InsureTech Hartford or uh, InsureTech Connect, share the two conferences that I'm going to for now. Uh, and and uh, thank you for your time. Definitely. It was a pleasure, Tony. Awesome.